you love someone, does it matter what their religion is? When atheist Daniel fell in love with Amadeep, who's a Sikh, they wanted to celebrate their marriage in her local place of worship, or Gurdwara, but they were refused. The objection was made because Daniel was not a Sikh. He could not participate in the religious ceremony at the heart of their faith. They told us their story. We wanted to bring uh, both our upbringings and cultures into the wedding, half English, half Indian, so everyone could celebrate. So my dad spoke to the man who's in charge in the Gurdwara to do our wedding, and he, he said no straight away. I felt really angry and upset, and as a Sikh girl who goes to the Gurdwara, who practices, and I Your did, dad as well. And my dad, my family were upset. I don't see a reason why we can't get married under her faith that she follows well when I don't. When we both share the same values, we're both good people, both love each other, obviously, and we both wanted to get married. It would have been nice that we could have uh, done it like that. Before, they used to allow it, and now it's totally stopped. The only thing that they said is that if you do become a Sikh, then you can, but I didn't feel it's right for anyone to change their religion or who they are just to get married. They should be who they are. You didn't fall in love with them because they're a certain person. You just fell in love with them. It should be allowed, otherwise it's, it segregates people and divides people and pushes people away. The future for the UK is a very integrated society and this isn't helping. This isn't my vision of the UK. Interfaith marriages will not damage anything. It will just, in fact, bring people together and make them learn more about each other and accept each other for who they are. Very frustrating, considering I've been so welcomed into the community by 90% of Sikh people out there, like a lot of our friends and, of course, half my family now are Sikh. If you're in a diverse community with different people, you're obviously going to fall in love with different people. It's not necessary that you're going to marry a Sikh or you're going to marry a Hindu or you're going to marry a white person. It, it's all coming together. So I do think they need to change for people today. Well, Amadeep and Daniel are not alone. There have been numerous reports of Sikh groups showing their dissatisfaction of mixed marriages. Some of them have been disrupting them in Gurdwaras. There's a fear among other faiths too that beliefs are somehow being diluted because more people are marrying outside their religion. Do we also downplay the potential difficulties and differences in mixed faith marriages? What do you tell the children, for example, if one of you is of faith and the other is not? Our question this morning, could you ever marry outside your religion? What are your thoughts? Email, text, call or use social media to get in touch. Tommy will be reading them out shortly. Let's welcome to the panel Jagmeet Singh of Sikh organisation Basics of Sikhi. Thank you very much Thank for being you. with us. Also from our London studio, Anita Kapoor joins us, who's a former member of the Standing Advisory Council on Religious Education. Welcome to the programme, Anita. Good morning. We'll chat to you in just a sec, but Jagmeet, I just want to pick up on a couple of things that Amadeep and Daniel said. They both share the same values. They're both good people. Interfaith marriages bring people together. Why should we segregate them and refuse them? We shouldn't segregate them or refuse them. There's been um, a bit of a confusion between um, interfaith marriages and um, a marriage which is uh, in a Sikh faith called the Anand Karaj, which is actually a holy ceremony between two Sikhs. Um, in this uh, Anand Karaj ceremony, you're actually, um, there's four rounds to it where you go around our living Guru, Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, and what happens is you're actually um, committing to them and saying, I renounce the rest of the world, I renounce all other faiths, all other ways, and I give myself to the Guru. So if we have somebody that's actually an atheist or a Hindu or a Muslim, a Sikh must never break somebody from their own faith, uh, but they always welcome into the Gurdwara. But if we have a Hindu or a Muslim or somebody of a different faith actually bowing down to a Guru or a master that is not their own, that would be falsehood. So they can get married, just not in a temple? Yeah, well, no, no. They actually can get married in a temple. In a Gurdwara, they can come and have a Gurdwara. They can have a, a, a civil marriage, a registry marriage. But Lots not of, a Sikh marriage? Well, the thing is, they can come in and have a civil ceremony, bring all their family, all their friends of any faith, 
so they're in the Gurdwara having a great time, getting married, taking their photographs, and then they can come into the, the Bar Sarb, where Guru Granth Sahib Ji is, where all the religious ceremonies take place, and they can have, get a blessing from the Guru. They can say, Guru Ji, we just got married, can you okay. give us a blessing? And you know what? All the protesters, they'll be very happy about that. There'll be no uh, disc uh, uh, um, leaving them out of the way. Anita, as a member of the Sikh community, you've been listening um, to what Jagmeet's been saying. What are your thoughts? I'm very saddened by what he said for the simple fact that going round the Granth Sahib, the greatest uh, opportunity to bow down to God, is to me a privilege that should be given to all. Who is anybody to say whether they should um, receive a blessing or do a certain part of the ceremony uh, in whatever form? I mean, it's ridiculous. You can go round the... Uh, uh, the great Indian fire seven times and bow down and etc etc I just don't understand when we believe there is one God who then actually defines the different parts of any religion that anybody can uh, participate in or not I, I really am flabbergasted that the young people are now becoming so narrow focused into trying to find an identity God lies in the hearts of men that serve other mankind. Maybe they should challenge that energy into going to the Punjab where we find that there need to be rehab centers, etc., etc. Serve mankind and stop focusing inwards rather than outwards. And our guru okay. said, we are doers, not talkers. Focus out. Check me. Don't focus in. Well, I would say we need to focus in because God is inside of us. And the same God that resides in me resides in everybody else. So everybody is welcome to God. Everybody is welcome to come to the Gurdwara. Nobody is excluding them. Can I ask you just, a just a moment. I just want to um, just touch on a couple of points that she made because she was incorrect in the way she described going around Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. She very correctly said that anybody can go around a fire. Okay. However, the, uh, our, our, our excuse question? me, just, just a moment. Madam. Am I right Who in thinking? Madam, excuse can't. me, just a moment. Okay, actually, Who good. There's, a, there's a point from Anissa. Which there, there, does, there is no holy religious text that says that no Sikh can come in and, and, be, and, and, and perform this ceremony. Well, there, there actually is specifically the what? Sikh Ret Mar Mariada. I just want to make a big difference, uh, make, make a, uh, a clear point, right? We respect all holy books. We give respect to them, but there's a massive Daddy, difference, ma so, madam. Just I, give me I one second. Let me just, to let me just make you. a quick point, madam. Could, no, no, please let me just finish my point, madam. Uh, okay, please my, go uh, ahead. Answer go ahead, my madam. question, right? Yes. Uh, am I right in thinking that Sikhism grew out of a hatred of discrimination and intolerance absolutely, in the Hindu world, absolutely. and that's why absolutely. all Sikhs are equal? That's Is absolutely that right? incorrect. So Sikhism, how can you do this? madam. Sikhism would never be born out of hatred. Sikhism is literally born out of love and is born... Is, is that's, that's the point I'm making. Madam, so please, let me just make my, a few points because the, with the crux of this point We've comes... We've made quite a few points and I'd like to actually hear from I our other guests as well. about the Guru and who, what it actually represents. Right now in India, the, uh, they are actually going into our Gurdwaras, the Indian temples, and taking Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj and ripping out the pages. That's now, to us, it's not a holy book. To but us, what about got, weddings in this right. country? Madam, let me just make Chagdi, point. You're actually here. ripping out the pages. Chagdi, now. our ungs, they're the limbs okay. of the Guru. We are talk we're, we're talking about, about here. what's going on We're talking about here and now. Jagmeet, I'd like to, with respect, when people come to the Guru, here, yes. they're coming to a living being, a living guru that we must respect as such. It's not an idol. Okay. You're not helping. Check me. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Edwina, that, I'd like to hear from Ramona. Ramona, yes. what, I mean, yeah. what are your thoughts as a, as a sort of an outsider to the, the Sikh religion looking in? I think uh, what happened was, was really unfortunate. It must have been such a horrible way to spoil someone's wedding day. Um, I think that um, for, for me personally, you know, when I was in my 20s, uh, my mum was like, just find a good Muslim boy. Hmm. You know, now I'm in my 30s, it's like, just find anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got these challenges anyway of just finding a suitable marriage partner. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's a reality of a multi-faith society that we live in that we do have more interfaith marriages. So it's a, I think it's an organic reality. And, let, well, and let's broaden this out to, to sort of marrying in or marrying out and what marrying out actually means. Um, Edwina, Jonathan Sachs, the chief rabbi, said the Jewish people haven't survived for thousands of years in the most adverse of circumstances, including including the Holocaust, is threatened by intermarriage and assimilation. Jewish communities throughout the diaspora are experiencing demographic decline. So, I mean, do you think interfaith marriage is somehow destroying Judaism? Well, that, that's the dilemma, that if people marry out and, and that's welcome, then the culture is uh, it's diluted and it can, it can be diminished. In fact, in, in Judaism, in many of the communities, the numbers are growing. 
through through people joining and becoming more religious and discovering their religion. Um, I, I thought so highly of marrying out. I did it twice. <laughs> and, and your parents didn't like it, did they? Well, the first time, when you're young, you're in love, uh, you've found the man of your dreams, you're looking forward to getting married, having babies, having a home and all the rest of it, and your parents' attitudes kind of drift into the background. You, you think to yourself, it's their loss. If they're not going to come with us and join the modern world, then uh, tough. And eventually, because they refused to come to the ceremony, uh, we got married in a church. Um, the second time, however, I said to my mother, this time you're coming. <laughs> and bless her, she did. And she brought her sister for support. And her sister brought her niece for support. So, and my brother came, so we had the whole family. It all ended happily. That's what I like to hear. Tommy, what are people saying at home? I think there's a lot of romantics at home. People saying, hey, love should conquer all. Uh, Robert says, love should conquer all. And if your religion is so good, it should allow you to be with that loved one. Uh, Anne saying, you usually marry someone you love. I don't remember giving religion just a second thought because it wouldn't have made a jot of difference. And it shouldn't do. Lee saying marriage is about unity, so uh, more than a little difference will drive a wedge rather than bringing people together. Obviously someone who wouldn't marry outside their faith. Uh, I feel that people should marry who they love and anyone with any spiritual belief should understand that love has no religious boundaries, says Robert. And Breit says the religious ceremony for Sikhs require both participants to be Sikh, otherwise it's pointless. That's why they cannot be different, which is what Jagmeet was saying. Love has no religious boundaries. <laughs> Nishi, I, I just I sort of love... Hang on a sec, I, I, because we I haven't just, heard from Nishi. It's like, um, I can't believe it's 2015 and we're still having this conversation. Like, I cannot believe that this is even still an issue at all. You know, with the greatest respects to everyone, the, even the phrases... I, I honestly didn't realise we were still using phrases like marrying out. I thought that, that this stuff was all done. Like years clearly ago. not. We, I, clearly I, not, I, because well, it's, I'm, an, it's, I'm, an yeah, it's an issue for Jonathan Sachs. It's an issue for Sikh I'm protesters. I'm absolutely baffled by it. I thought that we were past all of these conversations. We had all accepted that actually, you know, love is the most important ingredient to any relationship. And also, these are kind of ancient, powerful religions that have survived so much upheaval and change. Mm. And the idea that they're now going to fall apart because someone within the faith has married someone from outside of the faith is unfathomable to me. I don't understand how people can even think that this is an issue. Of course, you should marry whoever you want and have whatever ceremony you want. That's... that's, that's I can't believe we're having this conversation. <laughs> marry whoever you want, wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah? In or out of a temple. I mean, that's what... And that's what's being said. The kind of hostility and right. negativity is counterproductive. That's not going to persuade people to convert to Sikhism. OK. Many thanks, all of you. And thank you for your reactions at home, too. Now to the outstanding British film producer who is responsible for these films, The Mission, The Killing Fields, Chariots of Fire, Midnight Express, Bugsy Malone, Local Hero, to name but a few. David Putnam's movies have scooped 10 Oscars, 25 BAFTAs and a Palm d'Or. But the man who also holds 45 honorary degrees from the universities around the world has always been fascinated by education too. Now he's trying to reform it from the House of Lords. I have to say, Sikhs are being killed in Punjab and nobody's reporting it. Please report it. I'm very sorry about that. Nobody's reporting it. Thank you, sir. Could, could you show respect, though, to the other I people do, who are the, here? I do, but the thing is, you're not actually reporting the facts of what needs to be. This is a non-issue. Jagmeet. And we're discussing Jack this. Jagmeet, you, I have respect had, you. you have had your time. Thank okay. you very much for that. being here. But let, let, please, no, please, please, then. Hush. Jagmeet, it is time for other things. Please report what Jagmeet. actually needs to be reported. Jagmeet, I will have to get you taken I out that, unless, you, unless you are now okay. quiet and respect the guests here and our audience at home. actually being killed in Jagmeet, that is enough. by the BBC. I respect that. enough. Yes, madam. Hardy Sikoli met him and began by asking about the power of film. Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru. 